Hi, Calculus Kids. What we want to do is have the uh, second day of our related rates lesson. Uh, had we been in class, uh, we would go through one more example, and then uh, you guys would actually have a problem to try on your own. Uh, typically, we would make it a class challenge. Um, we'll do something similar to that. We'll just have to adapt it a little bit. Um, let me share uh, before we do number three, the police cruiser problem. Uh, that normally students uh, are starting to catch on. And uh, I really would appeal more to you guys to answer the questions and set the problem up. Not going to be able to do that quite on the video, um, but I do encourage you to be thinking and not just waiting for me to give the answers. Um, because after this problem, uh, it's going to be your turn. And then, of course, after that, it's assignment time. So... Why don't you read the police cruiser problem? Uh, tell you what, we'll read it together. It says that a police cruiser approaching a right angled intersection from the north. It's chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner, is now moving to the east. Sounds like a, a, a compass problem. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection and the car is 0.8 miles to the east, the police determine with radar that the distance between the cars and between them and the car is increasing to 20 miles an hour. So if the cruiser is moving at 60 miles an hour, at the instant of that measurement, what is the speed of the car? Now, uh, it is a really good related rates problem. I hope when you look at that, that you see uh, a couple different rates. Remember, rates can be written with a DT. Uh, we also have uh, a problem that's going to require a diagram or a sketch. So I'm going to start with that um, so that you guys can kind of see uh, what we mean about the north, south, east, west. Uh, what do we got? Uh, we got the police cruiser. It says that the police cruiser is moving uh, south, which will denote by like a downward movement. And then we sort of have the uh, the bad guy, or it could be a bad girl, right? It doesn't always have to be a bad guy. Um, he's moving this direction. Um, and uh, that, of course, is going to the east. Now, if we want to start labeling some things, it I would expect that you could label the distances. Um, uh, the police cruiser is 0.6 miles. We'll just use a 0.6. Uh, the bad car is 0.8. So those, of course, would be some measurements of distance. When you see a problem that's set up what in what appears to be turning into a right triangle, um, it would make good sense to call the horizontal dimension X and the vertical dimension Y. So we'll go ahead and use that, that type of notation. So what is 20? Where would you label the 20 miles an hour on this sketch? Do you see how it says that the distance between the two cars? So that, that distance is yet to be drawn, but here it is. It's the hypotenuse. But how are you going to label with calculus variables to 20. Do you see what I'm getting at here? We're looking to label 20 as some type of dt. Now, typically, the third dimension, the hypotenuse of right triangle, uh, we would label with a z. And so I'm going to go ahead and call the speed dz dt. Remember, the d stands for derivative or change. And so the change in the hypotenuse over the change in the time is 20. Are you feeling like there's something else you can label with a DT? Right, it's the police cruiser. Okay, so that's the change in Y. You can call that DY DT. That's the 60, right? Right? Um, not quite. Now, you see, when you're moving down, uh, just like in a physics class, we would say that that, um, that velocity, that rate is negative. We actually have to use a negative sign on this one, uh, again, because uh, of the, the idea of moving uh, down. I know that might seem uh, sort of strange, but that, that matches with the, the idea of um, that X and Y axis. Okay. Um, kind of feel like there's some other things we can label. Okay, if you're saying yes, uh, I could label dx dt. Well, sort of you could label it. 
you want to label it as what you're trying to find. You're trying to find the change in the car, the change in X over the change in time. There's one more thing about this problem that um, maybe experience would tell you, or maybe you're kind of feeling like that you need to know it. Um, but what I'm talking about is the actual just static Z value. I'm not talking about DZ. I'm talking about just the length of the hypotenuse. Now, maybe you're saying, I, how is I supposed to know that? Um, I will show you when we get the formula rolling. But before we do that, why don't we find that third dimension? Um, and what I'm talking about here is just running a little bit of Pythagorean theorem so that you can find that third dimension. And uh, that should be coming out to be, um, uh, because it's a textbook problem, it should be coming out to be the number one. So Z equals one, which actually represents one mile. I know, the cars are kind of far apart. You know, that sort of reminds me, if we were in class, we would have uh, maybe talked a little bit about some good uh, uh, police chase or just uh, police stories. Uh, in other words, have you gotten pulled over by the police? Um, I'm going to save my story for in class. I don't want to put it on the video. But uh, if you have a good story, uh, same thing. Maybe we can share it in the classroom. But uh, we've got everything set up. Okay, now remember... Uh, the next step is to think of a formula that uses these variables, the variables x, y, and z in a right triangle. That's correct. This time, your formula is going to be the Pythagorean theorem. And if you're saying, yeah, but that's got three variables in it, uh, indeed it does. In fact, we can do the derivative as a related rate with as many variables as we want. What you want to recognize here is that when you're ready to do the derivative, um, you're going to, uh, one by one, do the derivative of each one of these variables. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, but then remember you have to do the derivative of the inside. And so that's going to give you a dx dt. When we go to do the derivative of y squared, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to bring the 2 down. Yes, the derivative is 2y, but then you have to do the derivative of the inside dy dt. And then the same thing with z. Now, maybe, just maybe, you're saying, yeah, this is good. We should be getting all of these dt's because, well, that's all the given information. It's going to plug into this formula. In fact, um, this is why we needed to find the regular z value, because we were going to need to plug in uh, that value too, just like we will for x and y. And it looks like we're trying to find dx dt, so that's good because that's part of my equation. And then all the other variables have a home. And so it's time to uh, start substituting in. So I'm going to substitute in uh, my regular x value. That's my 0.8. Uh, I'm trying to find dx dt, so nothing gets substituted there. We're going to substitute in the regular y value. That was 0.6. Um, and yes, we have a d, uh, dy dt that we're going to substitute in. That's our negative 60. We decided it has to be negative. And then I'll go over here and I'll substitute in uh, my z value, uh, which we said we found to be the number 1. And then we labeled dz to be 20. And of course, we can substitute that in. So it's time to solve for dx dt. And um, not, a really, not a really hard equation. I'm just looking at my notes here. It looks like, yeah, that's going to come out to 1.6. Um, when you multiply these, you're actually going to get a negative 72, it appears. And over here, we can do that math. That comes out to be 40. As you continue to solve the problem, uh, you find out that the negative kind of gets added away, so that's good. And then we'll divide both sides by 1.6, so we end up with dx dt. That's what we were trying to find, equaling 70. Now, remember, that's miles per hour. We want to always label our answer uh, with the correct uh, units. And so the next question is, does the bad guy get away? 
And the answer is apparently yes. Um, of course, with the cop car only going 60 miles an hour, but uh, there's probably uh, some other people down the road that are going to eventually get them. Related rates with multiple variables. Also recognizing that we might need to solve for a uh, missing, uh, sort of missing uh, number in the problem. Um, and I know you'll see some of these uh, in the assignment. Well, that leads us to the last problem. We're actually going to skip number four, so we'll call number five the last problem that we're going to do. It says that you're trying to figure out how fast the area of a triangle is decreasing. How fast is the area decreasing if the base is four inches and the height is three inches, but both of those dimensions are dropping at a half inch per second. So we kind of get this idea of a triangle that is shrinking. Of course, we know how fast the, the uh, height and base are shrinking, but what you want to do is figure out how fast the area is changing. Perfect related rates problem. Now, if we had been in class, you guys would have, this would have been a class challenge. As a class, you would have tried to solve the problem. It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting problem. I have to kind of be careful. I don't say too much here. In fact, uh, I don't think I'm really going to say anything. Um, you need to pick the right formula, uh, the formula that has to do with the area of a triangle. So I did just say that. Um, but then you're going to uh, try to organize the data. I will say that you really don't need a sketch for this problem. Uh, but you do want to organize the data using variables. And then, ooh, you have to be ever so careful when you do the derivative. That's usually the part where there's some good class interaction. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to still give you the, op the possibility of earning some bonus. The possibility is if you get it right. Um, you can talk to your classmates if you want to. You can do it on your own. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to make it a challenge. So that means that there's an opportunity for some bonus. Um, now you say, what if I don't want bonus? Well, you still need to try the problem. Um, and so I'm going to ask you to submit the problem by midnight. Um, I hope that you submit the correct answer. Uh, you'll have to show your work and how you set it up. And then just go ahead and take a, uh, uh, a quick picture and convert that to a PDF so you can upload it uh, to uh, today's post. And then what we'll do tomorrow is I'll follow up if I need to, and uh, you guys will have your work period. Uh, I do encourage you to start the assignment. I would have said this in the classroom. Yes, I encourage you to start the assignment even today. It's a bit of a longer assignment, um, and it's one of those assignments where you sort of have to get through the first couple problems to be able to say that you're catching on. Um, you'll, you'll see it's a problem that has to do with volts and electricity. Once you get past that volt problem, um, then uh, it's time to kind of start the second phase of the assignment, which are going to be uh, word problems similar to the four that I have done with you. All right, so class challenge, area problem, submit that by tonight, and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow for the work period.